my name is Brooke and I am here to talk to you today about how I saved over a thousand dollars US dollars on my Disney cultural exchange program so over the summer of 2018 I did the Disney cultural exchange program I am from Canada um, so it is a three month long program I was there from May 7th to August 9th working for Disney I worked in merchandise my main location was World Disney but I traded my shifts all the time so you can't really call that my home location um, but either way that is where I was stationed so a lot of people go down to Disney and there's a lot of expenses there there's a lot of temptations there's a lot of stuff you want to do there's a lot of stuff you want to buy um, and I definitely did some of that and I definitely could have saved a whole lot more if I didn't do do that um, but it's just the way it was a lot of people say you know bring your own lunch to the parks or do this or do that to save stuff and a lot of the tips that you hear online are not tips that I followed I kind of was still able to buy what I wanted to in the most case um, the main thing I didn't buy was souvenirs in the end because my family did take yearly trips down to Disney um, so I was not a thousand percent interested in all the souvenirs because I had had a lot of them already um, but I still brought home more than a couple hundred dollars worth of merchandise to be honest. So I worked in merch and I was working approximately 50 to 60 hours a week. I would say maybe 52, 53 on average. Um, it was usually hovering around the 50 hour mark but there were some weeks I definitely worked 60 or more hours. Um, so it really varied depending on what my schedule was. I almost always worked six days a week. The entire time I was there there were only two weeks where I only worked five days a week. Um, so I was given a lot of hours which did help a lot. Um, I also lived in a Vista Way six person uh, three bedroom apartment. So we were paying $108 a week for rent that was coming out of our paychecks. Um, that was the rate while I was living there. I'm sure it's gone up by now. And through that, after taxes every week, my paycheck was usually between $250 to about $300, um, depending how many hours I had and was working. And then obviously tax was deducted off of what I made. So like in the end, on my pay card, there was about $250 to $300 deposited every week. So what I would do on every Thursday, which is when we got paid, is I would go to the ATM, which I've heard they removed off of housing, um, so this might not be the best strategy anymore, uh, but what I did anyway is I would take out about a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars in cash. Now, depending on how many, how much groceries I needed or what I was really going to be doing that week, if I knew I had like a big dining reservation planned or something, between a hundred and a hundred and fifty dollars. And that hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars would get me through the entire next week for my spending. I was only allowed to spend that money. I knew how much I had and the best part about cash is I would take my pay card and I would put it in my locker. That way I know that the only money I actually have to spend is that $150. If the money is on your pay card, you are taking that pay card and you are just swipe, 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 swipe. Um, you're not realizing how much you're actually spending until it's gone and then you have nothing. And if you carry your pay card around with you, it is very tempting to be like, oh, I only have $20 left for this week but like I really want that t-shirt let me just put it on my pay card quick don't let it happen um in the end, by doing that, you make a lot of impulse purchases when you carry your pay card around. And I found I was able to avoid a lot of that, honestly. Um, the merchandise I came back with, I'm super, super happy with. I don't think I made too many impulse buys except for food. There was a lot of food that I purchased that I probably could have, you know, gone without a couple Mickey bars. Um, but now, looking back on it, like, that's totally fine. Um, so, yeah, I think I was able to save a lot of impulse buys that way. So this was what I did my entire program. The only time, there were two weeks that I went over that 150 budget, or 100 to 150, it was usually around 120 I took out. Um, the only time I ever went over that budget was the two times I got sick. I had to go and buy a lot of like random medication in that that obviously went over. Um, so if I had not gotten sick, I would have been able to save a lot more money as well. So the ways I saved a lot of money um, was first off, I went to a lot of quick service instead of table service. I know people who ate like a table service meal pretty much every day. That's crazy. They are expensive and a lot of places you don't even really get a discount. So it's 20% off a table service meal and it doesn't even include all the table service meals. It's off select table service meals and then they add on a 18% tip. So you're really saving 2%. So if you are eating one table service meal, count yourself at about $50 for that meal. That's approximately what that is going to cost you. And this was in like 
mid-summer, so Christmas prices may even be a bit higher than that. I don't know. I've never been down there for Christmas. Um, but meals are expensive. Whereas a quick service meal, I would always get a kid size because the kid sizes are more than enough to be portioned, and it would never be more than $15, and they always include a little drink and a little snack too. So, like, they were super cheap. They filled you up. Like, it was more than sufficient. You don't need that huge buffet. Um, and it was really good. Even if you just got, like, a normal size meal, that's around $20. And Disney quick service food is good. There are some amazing places on property. Yes, a lot of them just have your generic burgers and stuff, but there are also some amazing quick service restaurants to die for there. So just find your favorites. I recommend Pizza Rizzo or Columbia Harbor House. Those were our favorites while we were there. Um, they were really, really good food and the prices were manageable too. My next tip is pack a lunch for work. The work cafeterias usually suck and they are not that overpriced. Like, I mean, there's some stuff in there that is definitely, but some stuff isn't. Like you get a sandwich and a piece of fruit for like $3.75 or something, which isn't bad, but when you factor in the fact that you could have bought like meat and a loaf of bread and like toppings for it for like not that much and then that lasts you like so many more days, it is, it's, it's still more expensive. It definitely is. There's always fridges and like somewhere to store stuff and sometimes there's microwaves and stuff too. Sometimes there's even like free hot chocolate or coffee or whatever in the break room too. So like there's plenty of like places to put your food and store your lunch and all that. Eat breakfast at home. If you're going to the park for park open, eat breakfast before you leave or take it with you to eat like on the bus ride there. Breakfast is a super easy meal. It doesn't take long to prepare. It doesn't take long to eat. Um, just have like I don't know, some toast or something. It's quick, it's easy. Um, park breakfast is pretty sparse and really expensive. A lot of it is the table service meals. So unless you have something prepared, just eat at home. Um, because two, in the mornings when you're going to the park, the best time to go to the park and do the rides is in the mornings because there's no lineups. So if you're taking extra time out of your day to eat in the morning too, that just wastes ride time that you want to get on those rides and you want to go see those characters and stuff. Um, so just eat at home. It saves you time and money. Cast connect. Connections. Oh my gosh. Okay, first off, Cast Connections is not the most mind-blowing thing in the world that everyone says it is, but it is cheap. If you want some Disney souvenirs, you can get them there for cheap. Um, pin training, for example, I never bought a full price pin. I only ever bought the dollar ones at Cast Connections and then I traded them for the other ones um, that I really did want. So I saved a lot of money pin trading. Don't go every week. Like, that's not worth it. Like, go. I think I went twice on my program and like they don't replace the stuff that much so it's usually pretty much the same stuff over and over again um so like go maybe like once every month or two and you should be more than sufficient with that um but if you're looking for just general disney souvenirs for family friends all that stuff definitely check out cast connections another thing i have is that just because you get money doesn't mean you need to spend it um it's hard because you're seeing all this stuff that you want, but I know people on the program who literally got money one day and would be like, okay, I'm going to Cast Connections, I'm going out for dinner, bye, and then it'd be like Saturday and they'd be like, no, I can't do anything, I have no money, I can't even buy groceries this week. What? No! Like budget yourself. You are an adult coming onto this program. Think about the expenses you're going to have. Don't splurge all your money right away. Um, think about what could happen later in the week. Think if you like save your money throughout the week and then like you do, you still have some of that money left at the end of the week, then maybe you can get that t-shirt you want. Um, and it's like not going to make you feel bad about yourself and you still had like the rest of the week to eat food. Um, you never know what unexpected expenses you may occur. Um, um, little things can happen. You may need to buy something as simple as like more toilet paper and you just can't like afford it. And it's something you just need to realize and it's something that is going to hit you with a really harsh reality if you don't know before you get onto the program. Other than that, my main suggestion is even if you are not completely budgeting yourself, um, take out the cash off your pay card no matter what. Um, I find cash in general, and this isn't even just a DCP tip, this is like a life hack tip. If you're spending cash, you are so much more conscious of the money that you're spending rather than it going on a card because you can see it physically depleting from your wallet. On a card, it is out of sight, out of mind, swipe, swipe, and go in your wallet. You can see it going away. So getting cash out is just something that makes you so much more conscious of what you're doing on your program. I really didn't try that hard to save money on the DCP and it really isn't that hard as long as you're not doing impulse spending and and 
you're conscious of what you're doing. Yes, you can make some amazing memories at those really expensive Cinderella's Royal Table or whatever character breakfasts or dinners or whatever you're doing, um, but you can also make some great memories too at the quick service sit downs or just hanging out in the parks. Um, you don't need to do anything extravagant. I had some amazing memories on my program and in the end it's the people you're with, not what you're doing. So just try your best not to break your bank and I'm sure you will do fine. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want any more DCP videos, I'm going to be making more, but if you have any suggestions on them, leave them down below. Um, once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a magical rest of your day. I'm